Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another pick a card reading and this one is about who were you in a past life. I am so stoked about this reading. So if you guys have never done one of these videos before, basically what you do is you look at the cards right now, these cards that are laying right here, and you pick which one calls to you. So take a minute, even pause the video if you need to, to figure out which card and which pile really calls out to you and which one you want to pick. This is pile number one. This is pile number two, this is pile number three, this is pile number four, and this is pile number five. And basically what's gonna happen is once you've picked your pile that calls out to you that you really feel drawn towards, then you skip ahead to that part of the video. I'll have timestamps linked in the description box so you guys can skip ahead to whatever timestamp that uh, correlates to which card that you picked and that will basically tell you about who you were in a past life. I am so stoked about this. I absolutely love these card readings. As you guys know, I say that in basically every pick a card reading that I do. So yeah, without further ado, let's hop right into this video and find out who you were in a past life. So pile number one, we have the queen of cups and then we have the three of cups, the four of pentacles, then we have the Milky Way perspective and then we have the full moon in Taurus. And then we have Break the Chain. So these are the cards that we have. Okay, so immediately in this reading, I'm definitely feeling like you were a rich person, for sure. We have the full moon in Taurus here. We have the Queen of Cups beside the celebration card, beside the money and finances kind of card. Um, so I really feel like Back in the day, you were probably somebody who was really high up. I don't think you were a peasant in a past life. You were definitely someone who had a lot of money, but I also feel like you were the type of person that didn't actually have to work for that money. You got to celebrate and enjoy that money and uh, be kind of, you know, wealthy and bask in your material life, especially with the full moon in Taurus, because Taurus really, um, indulges in the material life, uh, so to speak. And so with the four of, of pentacles here, I really feel like you were somebody who was really taken care of. Um, somebody who also got to celebrate a lot. The queen of cups is also somebody who's really in touch with their intuitive side. So you were probably somebody who believed in spirituality of some kind back in the day, um, in your past life. You were probably somebody who was intuitive, but I don't feel like you got to actually really like practice it like monetarily. I feel like you were somebody who just got taken care of, like maybe you were a woman in the past life um, and like a queen or a princess or like the wife of a duke or something like that where you didn't have to really work but you got invited to like all of the fun events, all of the fun parties. Like this really seems like it was a good past life. It doesn't seem like it was something that was um, you know, hard or anything like that. It seems like it was a really positive past life. You got really taken care of, but you were, you placed a lot of value on the material life and you might bring some of that with you in this life. You might kind of feel like material things are important to you, or maybe even in this life, you are completely drawn away from material stuff because you already lived it in this life. So it could be either, or it could go either way. Um, the perspective card with the Milky Way also kind of ties in with the Queen of Cups with your intuitive side and really being intuitive and in touch with your spirituality. I feel like you were definitely like in touch with the spiritual side. I don't really feel like you got to like, you know, really practice it a ton, but I feel like it was something really personal to you that you did. Um, you maybe shared it with your like close people that were around you, but with a lot of like the kind of taurus -y kind of feel, I feel like a lot of your focus was definitely more on the material side this lifetime. This card, we have Break the Chain, Ancestral Patterns, Healing, Rewriting the Future. So with this card being the last card, it might be that you bring a lot of this kind of mindset to this life. And it's talking about um, needing to break that chain because maybe you have an ancestral pattern of doing this. Um, so you might be someone who's really intuitive, but you don't actually really utilize it. You don't get to. Maybe you want to, but maybe you just haven't been able to yet, or maybe you focus 
every life a lot on the material side of things. So maybe it's saying that it's time to change that up a bit and embrace the more spiritual side. Of course, we can still have material things, but don't really base your entire life on that. It might be something that you do every single lifetime, which is great but um, it's talking about breaking the ancestral pattern. So maybe you've even done that in this life and maybe you've become somebody totally different. But if you haven't, I think it's kind of telling you to break free from that and become a little bit more like, focus your, your energy and your value on things that go even deeper than the material side of things. But you were definitely someone who was rich, taken care of. You probably lived close to the ocean, especially with the cup cards that are here. I'm definitely seeing some like, by some sort of body of water um, for sure. Maybe somewhere with a lot of earthy things going on as well. You probably lived in some kind of city back then, especially with all the material stuff that you had. So you probably lived close to the water, but in a city that was sort of near the water. I'm getting the feeling just intuitively that it was somewhere kind of in the Renaissance, kind of Europe sort of era. So if that's what calls to you, if that's what something that you, if that's something that you're drawn to in this life, it could quite possibly mean that you we're from that era and that's where you had your past life. That's all for you, number one. So pile number two. We have the seven of pentacles. We have the fool card. The six of pentacles. The wind card of activation. Balance, spirituality, and practicality, moon in Pisces. And then dance, something to lift your vibration. All right, so immediately with looking at this, I am getting that you were the nomadic type of person, especially with the full card and the wind card. So I really feel like you probably did a lot of travel in your past life. You were kind of going around, hopping from flower to flower, place to place. Um, in the beginning of your life, I feel like you didn't come from a lot and then you had to build it and work for it. But I feel like by the end of your life, you actually became really successful and like made something of yourself, made enough money really to get by and also help others. I really feel like you were somebody who was really interested in helping the good of humanity and you also traveled to do so. You traveled around to different places because I feel like you were the type of person who, once you got done with one city and you felt like you did your part and helped out and made your mark, you moved on to the next city to help out and really share your gifts and your knowledge and your kind of wealth that you've made for yourself, even though it seems kind of like you didn't really come from much and you were a person who might have even been a new soul because the fool also um, kind of shows like new souls and stuff like that. So your past life, you might have been really new to this world and you were kind of figuring out the ins and outs of how it works, but you were bringing in your like spiritual side that really wanted to help people. And so wherever you came from, you were somebody who was really used to um, sharing your good to the rest of the people around. So you were definitely a traveler. You were definitely some kind of explorer. And I feel like you had like the perfect balance between being spiritual and having money as well, because this is definitely a card that says you are somebody who, you know, got wealthy. This card is somebody who, you know, planted their seeds, but you also have the fool and the wind card and the dance card. So I really feel like you were a very free spirit who didn't place all of their value on like material things. You had like the perfect balance between being free and then having enough to where you could share it and then also have enough for yourself at the same time um, and maybe even a little bit extra. But you had that perfect balance between, you know, spirituality and the material world. And so you might even incorporate that with this life. You might feel like, you know, you're not super, super drawn to um, a whole lot of material stuff and you're not like you just have like a good balance and so I feel like since you came to this world already having that knowledge you might incorporate it in your life now where you don't feel like you absolutely need to make all of the money in the world you don't absolutely need to be a free nomad living in the forest type of thing because you've already figured out your good balance between those two things and maybe you might uh, dive into one or the other more so 
throughout this life, um, but you still remain to have that balance between coming back to the other side and then, oh, I'm going to do some more spiritual work. Oh, I'm going to do some more physical world work and money work and material things. But you have the perfect balance. You're somebody in this life who might also have still a bit of that free spirit where you like to travel, you like to see new things. Um, You're definitely a soul that likes to help people though, for sure. You're a soul that enjoys giving to other people. Um, But I'm also really feeling like you're a soul who has, who kind of like figures it out every lifetime. Because in this lifetime, I'm really feeling like you kind of just went with the wind and it brought you to the coolest, funnest places and you had a really good life. It's like you walked through life without really having to worry because most people, when they're not really born into the most, which I don't feel like you were born into like a lot, it's not like you got like hand-me-downs of inheritances, not that there's anything wrong with that at all, but it's like you weren't born with a lot, but it didn't stress you out. For some reason, you felt fine. You loved the freeness of it but you made something for yourself where you were able to just travel, help people, give to people, um, and you were just that kind of soul, and you just had this good balance of it, and you were connected spiritually, but also connected to the world and to the people, and yeah, that's, that's definitely what I'm getting. This last card, um, it says, do something to shift your vibration, so I feel like you're definitely a vibration shifter, but maybe in this life, don't forget about the good balance that you're so naturally good at. It's like, keep remembering that and keep incorporating it in this life and shift those vibrations because I feel like you're like a master at letting, you know, stresses go, but you have to just remember it from your past life. If you do find yourself getting stressed this life, just remember that you've already mastered being able to just walk through life, being carefree and just trusting that things will come to you because of the good that you do. So I also feel like you lived somewhere that was a bit like kind of mountainous because I'm seeing definitely mountains, but you're kind of like a traveler, definitely in a nomadic type of area. And so wherever the nomads lived, I believe there was um, some of them kind of in the eastern parts of Asia where there was like nomads there kind of like look around where where nomads are from. And if you're drawn to those areas, that's quite possibly where you were from because I'm definitely getting a nomadic type of vibe. But you also might have been the person that was, you know, one of their own. You weren't like the rest of the people where you were from. So you could even be from literally anywhere in the world, but you were just like, you know, the OG type of like, I'm going to be a nomad, even though nobody else here is a nomad because the fool is definitely somebody who creates their own journey, who's really unique and doesn't really follow the rules of what everybody else kind of does. So that's what I'm getting. Um, Also with the pentacles, it could also mean that you came from a rich family, but you didn't take any of what they had. You kind of made your own because this is something that somebody makes their own, but with a lot of pentacles here, you could have also possibly came from some place that was rich, but you just, you made your own instead. Cause I'm really like, what I'm getting from this is that you made this, you did this, you attracted this. This was all done by you type of thing. So that's definitely what I'm getting for that. That correlates with you guys. That could quite, quite possibly be what your past life was. So that's all for number two. So pile number three, you have the eight of pentacles, the three of swords, the queen of wands, the iceberg submerged. It is time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. The age of light, you've been training for this for lifetimes. Okay, so immediately I'm getting the vibe that you were some type of warrior. And even if you didn't go directly on the field of battle, um, I'm really feeling like you had a lot of say in some type of war planning. And the reason why I feel that is because we have the swords over here. The Queen of Wands is somebody who is really fiery and passionate. Um, And then we also have the full moon in Scorpio. And then we also have, um, you've been training for this for, for lifetimes. So when I see this, I really feel like you were somebody who was at least trained in some type of combat or fighting with swords. 
Um, but you were also, with this card, I'm really feeling like you were some type of apprentice. So you might have been an apprentice to learn how to fight with swords or to learn how to fight or to like learn the strategies of a battlefield or something like that. Um, you could have also been definitely a heartbreaker, that's for sure, because I feel like you were somebody who was really focused on kind of what you were doing rather than getting so emotionally involved with love. I feel like you had like a lot of big ideas and you're the type of person that just made them happen. You were like, this is my dream. This is what I'm doing. You were very self-motivated, um, but you also could have had a tendency to um, be your own kind of self-sabotage because what I'm kind of feeling with uh, this beside the Three of Swords is that you were really quick to make really harsh decisions to cut things out of your life when you needed to. Like if you ever fell in love with somebody and then then they maybe um, were taking too much of your time and you needed to focus on your apprentice work, you were just like cutting that out of my life. No more of that. And so it's kind of like you maybe self-sabotaged a lot of, you know, your your life and the things that you may have actually wanted without realizing it until it was kind of too late sort of thing. So that's the vibes I'm getting there. Um, and then also submerged. So I, so I feel like somehow at the end of your life, you were a little bit like taken over, so to speak. Uh, not in like a spiritual sense, but like in a physical sense of, you know, maybe you went into battle or somehow you kind of died I don't want to say in a harsh death, but that's kind of what I'm seeing. Um, something, especially with this card and then the iceberg submerged card, I'm really feeling like it was a really kind of weird, you know, harsh kind of death. So you might have some weird fears this lifetime around death. Also with the full moon in Scorpio, Scorpio kind of rules death as well. And so it's kind of talking a lot about the way that you died here. And I feel like it was something not so pleasant and so this lifetime if you have any sort of fears around death i feel like it definitely comes from your past life but you're also a really strong person this life for sure um the queen of wands is a very strong person you obviously went through a lot in your lifetime you were incredibly hard worker i really feel like you're an apprentice this card is just like speaking apprentice to me so i really feel like you were some kind of like you were training for something um, and it could have been something around like fighting or war or just like the strategies behind all of that kind of stuff. Or since there's the queen here, you might have even been like the wife of somebody who fought in all of the wars and all of the stuff. So you could have definitely been that as well. And you were like a really hard worker or you helped your husband out with um all of his kind of like training and stuff and maybe you were like the 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 mind behind it all and you were the planner and the thinker and the person with a fiery attitude that just knew how to get things done and knew how to do things but somehow it's like you went through this pattern of kind of breaking your own heart so definitely I see that. You were also a heartbreaker as well, but I feel like you doing the heartbreaking also broke your heart at the same time because I don't think you really knew how to balance out all areas of your life and you only knew how to focus on one thing and make that one thing happen. You were really good at making things happen, but it was like a really fiery type of like, definitely a fiery kind of person is what I'm seeing, but you knew how to get things done, but definitely around death, I'm seeing some kind of like not so good stuff like you were definitely overthrown in your position or just like taken down type of vibe is what I'm getting which doesn't sound too amazing I'm sorry for that but it's just what I'm seeing so if you have any sort of fears like I said around death or if you have any sort of fears around like certain things and you just don't want to like go near certain um like swords and stuff or maybe you're even like obsessed with like fighting um shows like whether that be like game of thrones or you know anything around like you know like battles and whatever especially like past battles you might be kind of drawn to because that's where you were in a past life or you just might be like totally sick and don't like those things at all like puts you in a bad mood because of you know your past life so 
I I'd always notice it's like either or with people when they have a past life with something they're they're either like totally drawn to it this time or this lifetime or either like completely disgusted by it this lifetime it's either or always so definitely look at that and then the last card was you're training for this for a lifetime so I really feel like whatever you learn this lifetime is going to really like stick with you for a long time and it's something like whatever you experience this lifetime is going to really help you in this life somehow it's like your lessons that you learned are really valuable to you now it's like you were meant to do this whole thing and experience this whole life in order to become the person that you are now because you might be a stronger person now who's like fighting to balance out their life and find love and balance it into their uh, lifetime and you're figuring out how to do that. And so um, maybe you're also the type of person that needed to build up their own strength so much so that you came into this life as a very strong, strong-willed person that nobody can really push around. I don't feel like you're a person that can easily be pushed around, especially since your last life was all about you know, this kind of stuff. You're definitely a strong-willed person this lifetime who does not take any bullshit. So I feel like this was supposed to happen in order for you to be in this life um, kind of being uh, a natural-born leader, but you also might have... Sorry, my camera just died there. Um, you also might have um, fears about kind of what happened this um lifetime is kind of what I was about to say. I kind of forgot what I was about to say, but I know I was about to say that sentence. So however that correlates in this video, I'm sorry guys, my camera totally died on me, but that is what I feel for pile number three. So pile number four. All right, we have the tower card, the page of wands, the king of wands, Island, solitude. The full moon in Aries, a fiery climax approaches. And Anna, the grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. So immediately I'm feeling like you went through a hell of a lifetime in your past life. So with the tower card, I feel like you went through a lot of challenging times, a lot of upheavals, huge, massive learning experiences that you probably take into this life. And you're a probably well-shaped person who has just a lot of worldly knowledge naturally right out of the bin. You might be an old soul that people are like, when people meet you, they're probably like, wow, you're so mature for your age, even at a young age, because your past life, you experienced so dang much that you are such a well-rounded soul from the get-go because you went through such massive experience in your last life. So you're definitely someone where people would probably in this life refer to as an old soul. Also, immediately I'm feeling like you were definitely someone who was a fire sign. We have the full moon in Aries. We have the king of wands, the page of wands. You were totally a fire sign. So I'm getting a lot of messages from this reading. The page of wands, I feel like it means a lot of different things in this one. So this can represent you when you were a kid going through massive change and massive things, even as a kid, like you may have experienced the death of your parents when you were a kid. You may have experienced um, total wars and everything. You might be a person in this lifetime. You're either super attracted to wars or super turned off by them just because you, you probably experienced that in your past life. I'm also feeling like as you were older, you still experienced massive destruction and upheaval and like kind of probably some deaths that of people who are really close to you. Like when I look at this, with the tower beside the page of wands, you may have experienced the death of a child or a close friend or like a new lover because the page of wands can also be um, a lover that comes into your life that's kind of new. It hasn't developed to like the the super like relationshipy stages, but it's a new passionate kind of love. But beside the tower, I feel like you experienced so much loss this, this last life. Um, so you probably... Um, you probably were really familiar with death this lifetime. I feel like you experienced a lot of deaths of people that were close to you, a lot of loss of land, of homes, of your own 
is what I'm talking about. Um, so when I say like loss of your homes, I mean loss of your first home, loss of your second home, kind of. You were constantly being thrown kind of the crappy end of the stick this lifetime, which I'm really sorry to say, but I also want to say that you, it shaped you to be such a strong person because the king of wands, like, the wands usually rule like the idea thinkers, the the passionate like, oh, I have this great idea. The king of wands doesn't really do that. He's past that point. He's thought of all of the ideas. He's the guy that goes and makes them happen. He's the guy that kind of takes his ideas and changes the world with those ideas. And so I feel like you became such a strong person. Like the kind of imagery that I keep seeing for this lifetime is kind of like, oh, what's that movie with Mel Gibson? Um, let me Google this for a second. There's a movie with Mel Gibson that this is totally reminding me of. Oh, the movie Braveheart. So if you guys have seen the movie Braveheart and if you pick this pile, watch that movie if you have not seen it because this is basically kind of what your lifetime was like. You may or may not have lived in that same sort of era, but you had a really similar life to to Braveheart, I would definitely say. Um, you had a lot of things taken away from you, but because of that, you were on such a grind to always attain more and reattain and reattain all sorts of different things. And so you got so good at making things happen. You got so freaking good at manifesting because you lost such big things in your life and you didn't want to be without them. So you literally had to make them rehappen. You literally had to recreate them. And so you got so good at manifesting. So I just want you to know that in this lifetime, you still have that power. You may or may not realize it. You may notice that you're really good at manifesting this lifetime. And if you have not realized that yet, please get on that because you actually are really, really good. Just call on this past life energy again, because this is, this is really powerful. You were you were somebody who became so powerful because of what they lost. Um, with the island card here, this is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like you may or may not have probably lived on an island in your past life or somewhere definitely surrounded by water. Um, you know, there's lots of islands around Europe. There's lots of islands around like Malaysia, Indonesia, um, even Japan is an island. So any kind of island like that, even New Zealand is an island. So kind of find where your soul is like naturally called to, what culture that you're naturally called to and find if there's any islands around there or if it is an island because that is probably where your past life was. Um, and you're probably in solitude a lot of your life and alone a lot because this card also says solitude and since you lost so much, I feel like you had a lifetime where you were um, mostly alone that whole lifetime and so you might find yourself in this lifetime needing your alone time to recharge just because it's something that you're used to. Um, but you don't need to live that way this lifetime. You can definitely have a lot of people around because I don't think you need to relive this life. That's for sure. Um, a fiery climax approaches the full moon in Aries. And so I feel like you had a lot of crazy climaxes this lifetime or the your past life because of all of the crazy stuff that happened, this is pretty self-explanatory. The full moon in Aries, I feel like you had to fight a lot this last lifetime. Aries is a fighter. They, um, they're kind of like the ruler of war. They're ruled by Mars, you know? They, um, they're really like war type of sign. So yeah, you're definitely that. That is the message I'm getting. And this last card, what did it say? Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding light, laying foundations, divine plan. So I feel like the universe is saying that somehow this was a divine plan for you to learn a lot of lessons in one lifetime in order to be such a mature soul this lifetime and really figure out how to manifest stuff because I feel like you're a person that your soul's mission is to be able to like make things happen. So definitely utilize that power. It is something you had to learn in your last life. So you have that knowledge already. You just need to uh, call on it if you haven't realized that yet. So that is what I got for pile number four. So pile number five, the last pile, we have the queen of pentacles, the knight of cups, the chariots, winter solstice reflection, you're very close to achieving your goal. Gibbous 
that's the gibbous moon. Sorry, I almost, I almost pronounced that wrong. Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. All right, so with this reading, um, I feel like you were somebody who was a nurturer in your past life. Like you probably had children that you took care of and you kind of like cooked the home meals, did all of this, all of the stuff. You um, really valued security in your lifetime and you had it, you had that security. Um, it was there for you. With the Knight of Cups, I feel like you were a really creative person as well. So you probably take even that with you this lifetime. You might be a creative person because I feel like in, the, in a past life, in your past life, um, you had kind of like creative expressions, you did things, you loved um, the arts, you loved all that kind of stuff. So you might be a person that really enjoys that even this lifetime as well. Um, you enjoy the material side of things, you enjoy being nurtured, you enjoy taking time for yourself. The Queen of Pentacles likes that kind of stuff. She's also about family and um, really taking care of other people. So there's that and then also Definitely having a creative side. I'm getting a lot of like feminine energy from this, especially with the Queen of Pentacles, uh, just because she's a nurturer. So uh, you most likely would have been a woman in a past life if you're not this lifetime. So yeah, I'm definitely getting those vibes. Or you were a, a man who definitely was in touch with his feminine side and his nurturing side and had a lot of creative stuff. So you could have also been an artist in a past life who... Um, you know, you might have had like your security and home life and then you were an artist on the side and you might have even left that home life in order to pursue your artistry at one point. So, um, yeah, once, you know, maybe your kids were grown up or even, you know, once they started being able to slowly kind of start taking care of themselves, you might have left them uh, to go and explore the arts. And I think you had to travel to a new place in order to do that. So... I feel like wherever you were born, it might have been more small town vibes and you had to travel to a bigger city in order to explore your creative side and your artsy side. Um, so you definitely, I feel like you might have been somebody who was a painter or you enjoyed acting or you enjoyed writing, uh, but somehow you, you um, went on like a journey and moved somewhere else in order to explore that. You definitely didn't, ha you couldn't stay where you were. So wherever you were first initially born in your past life was definitely not the kind of place where you were able to pursue your creative side. And so you moved for that. Um, with the winter solstice reflection card, since the fact that it says winter, you might've lived somewhere that was cold. <laughs> so that could have been either Russia, Northern Europe, um, Northern America and eventually had to move in order to um, kind of pursue what you wanted to do. So you might have not always lived in a wintry place. You probably may have been born in a wintry place and then moved um, more south because the bigger cities were more in the warmer areas back then as far as I know. Uh, there was definitely big cities also in the wintry areas. So you might have even moved somewhere again that was you know, still in the same northern kind of hemisphere and uh, just moved to a bigger city there or you might have moved somewhere warm. But kind of what I'm getting the vibes of when I see the chariot, um, I, f I just feel like you moved somewhere a little bit warmer, but definitely like a bigger city. So I feel like you got to live in both. You got to live the small town life and you also got to live the big town life. So with this card saying you're very close to achieving your goal, I feel like for most of your life you had this big dream of being your artist self and expressing that and sharing it to the world. But for most of your life, you were a nurturer taking care of probably home life. You were probably like a stay at home wife. That's the vibes that I'm getting. Um, like kind of like a homemaker. And But you always dreamed something bigger. You always dreamed of pursuing your creative passions. And I feel like eventually you got to do that. And you definitely, definitely explored that and made it happen. So yeah, in this lifetime, you might feel a strong desire to pursue your creative goals because I feel like it's something you learned later on in life, in your past life about, you know what, I don't care about anything else. I have to pursue my passions and my dream. And I feel like you got to do that. And so it's like a lesson that you learned that you now brought with you in this lifetime. And so you probably feel a strong 
call to um, maybe not living the traditional life and just literally just following your desires this lifetime because it's something you had to learn in your last life. The last card is Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in the Subtle Realms. And so you might get a lot of messages this lifetime from your guides. Um, your family in your past life might actually be your guides this lifetime because they're probably really close to you. And um, I just feel like they might be actually like your guides and angels this lifetime. And they give you um, inspiration and ideas and they are helping you chase your goals this lifetime and giving you that support because maybe in this last life when you moved, um, maybe you didn't bring your family along with you and you just did it on your own and maybe you had regrets regarding um, leaving them and abandoning them. So now they're your guides. I don't feel like they might be physically with you this lifetime. I feel like they're with you spiritually and actually helping you so that you feel okay with um, going and chasing your creative goals and all that stuff this lifetime. So that's kind of the message that I'm feeling and that I'm getting for you. I definitely feel like you lived somewhere that was definitely colder. Um, but yeah, you you got that courage to go and chase your dreams at the end. So that's really positive, really good. But yeah, that's that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. That's all for all of the cards. Let me know in the comments down below if it was accurate for you guys. I always love reading your guys' comments. But yeah, thank you guys so much for being here and sticking with me through these videos. If you guys have any suggestions of another pick a card reading that you guys wanna see from me, I will definitely make that happen. Just let me, let me know in the comment section below any good ideas for pick a card readings and I will totally do those and make those happen. But give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys have not already and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Hey.